First of all, giving all praises to the great King, the Creator of heaven and earth, and all that in it is. Blessed be His holy name. Thanking Him for opening up our eyes that we may see the goodness and the glory that God would put in the midst of us, the path of salvation, and all the wonderful things that we're supposed to attach ourselves to. I'm thankful because I know that the Most High God is in control of this earth. As crazy as the events may be that's occurring in the earth, it's due to the disobedience of God's law. I want to thank Him for allowing me to be part of this great congregation that I love so much, Shema Yisrael. Thank Him for my brother, Chief Chief, Prince Jeriel, Chief Kohat, all the young officers, all the brothers, all the sisters, the elders, Ima Muna, Ima Ifua, Ima Sarah, Akoti Aleph, and even my mother-in-law that's here today. I thank God for the safe trip that he has given her and allowing her to enjoy herself with her family it means so much. Goodness can take the place of so much that we don't have as a people. Dealing upright with each other, dealing just with each other, loving each other, brings so much joy to a people. We have to try it. You have to live in it and give glory to, to the Almighty. I'd like to go to the 91st Psalm. I thank the Most High God, especially for my teacher, even Hakohen Levi, and ask that he continue to be with him and bless him and give him strength and bless his household and his family and give him the love of his children. That means so much, the love of your children. You know, that's why we got to grow up understanding family and family structure. Grow up paying attention to those that God has put over you to raise you, which is your mother, your father, it means so much. Because they were created to set you right, especially if you see that they're on the right path and that they're striving to obtain that which God has in store for them. Believe it, the Father don't cut you short. Most High God don't cut us short when it comes to the nation of Israel, especially if we are obedient to His will. All we got to do is be ready and put yourself in a position to hear, and Father will guide you, because He's magnificent in all that He does. Who has a God like this people here? You understand? You got to feel that. Who has a God like the nation of Israel? There's none. And there got to be a spirit within the people to answer that. Because God rules over you and lords over you not like any other family upon the face of the earth. You are special to Him. And that's why when you don't apply yourself to the Torah, when you don't apply yourself to the precepts of the Almighty God, you lose out on understanding. Yes, There's so much in, in this when you give yourself over to it. You got to have both feet in this in order to understand it. Let us go. In the book of Psalms, Psalms 91, starting at verse 1, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. O thou that dwellest in the covert of the Most High, and abidest in the shadow of the Almighty, I will say of Jehovah, who is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Right, those that abide in the secret places of the Almighty, when you put yourself in 
a godly position. And when you walk in righteous paths, you put yourself in the position for God to talk to you. It's the secret path of the Almighty because many cannot find it. Many people can't find it. That's why you don't play with this. This is here to enlighten us. These precepts and these scriptures are left on record to bring you back to yourself. Don't play with it. Jump into it. Because he's monitoring us on how we value the Jews that he set before us. If our wisdom, if the Torah is our wisdom in the sight of all the people, if the Torah is what established us in the sight of all the families that are upon the face of the earth, there is no greater Jew that you can receive from God. And the Most High God said, I have not given this to any other nation. And he said, and as for my precepts and my statutes and my laws and commandments, nations have not known them. Don't you see how, how, how he looks upon us different and special? You got to receive it with understanding that God makes a difference between you and all the families that are upon the face of the earth. So when I, if someone was to ask me who has a God like Israel, I'm going to let you know there's nobody that got a God like Israel. Because I'm into this. Let us go. He will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Mm -hmm. He will cover thee with his pinions and under his wings shall thou take refuge. And under his wings shall we be shielded. We got salvation that's second to none in all the earth. We got a promise from God that no hurt could come to you. And if things come to you by time and chance, and if events hit you because many come before the righteous, but through your obedience and your love and your trust to the Almighty, He delivers you out of them all. This is the great King. We just can't lose for winning if we're on the right path. Let us go. His truth is a shield and a buckler. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flyeth by day. So this is, now if you tell me that the truth of the Almighty God would be my shield and would be my buckler, if I'm wise, then I'll live in it. Because the word of God is not a lie. So I would live in this if I'm wise. Hear instructions and be wise and refuse it not. And when you hear the word of the almighty God, harden not your heart. Because it don't come to everybody. And you don't know how many opportunities you're going to get. Because there's people waiting to serve this God. There's people in their minds thinking that they found God in the name of someone else. And are wholehearted to that. That are better to naught than we are to truth. And Father sees that. And do you think he'll let that person stay in naught? Because they're saying thank you to the wrong person, but their heart is seeking God. This is a great king. And this is a merciful God not missing anything. Let us go. Of the pestilence that walked in darkness, nor of the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand may fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. It shall not come nigh thee. You hear this? A thousand, we can be in the midst of destruction. That's why I know as an Israelite, you see, there's sayings and then there's black sayings. <laughs> you understand? And black sayings was the most foolish sayings I ever heard. Black sayings don't split a pole. Don't sweep over my feet. A black cat. 
All them little silly sayings. I don't live by them. If you can't harm me, then I can go in a place where you call upon a false god. And I can cry aloud and spare not. And I can come out of there with more props than you saying, I'm not going in there. But my people are in there. And they're lost. And the word is within you, standing outside there. So what are you going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Father say, don't be scared of them things. He said, they have eyes, but they see not. Them statues can't do me nothing. That's right. He said, they have mouths, but they speak not. Hands have they, but they don't handle nothing. Feet, they don't even travel. I thought one day I was going to be able to go into this church on Ralph Avenue and teach. Man, I wanted to go. Bible and bullets. What's the name of that? What's the name? What's the name of that place, man, where they had the shootout? Yeah. Ralph and Prospect. Ralph and Prospect. That's where our people are. That's where the word need to be. It's no different than when Elijah and the prophets. When they was having the contest, Israel was in right there in the midst of falsehood. But truth prevailed. Give God the glory. Don't worry about what people say. Absolutely. If you feel in your heart you got something to say and it needs to be said in that place, and it's concerning God and His people, you go in there and say it. You can't do me nothing. I'm not commanded that I can't go into a church. I can't go in there and worship. But I can go in there and win friends and bring them to a better way of life. It's important that we understand these things, man. Let us go. Eight. Only with thine eyes shall thou be home and see the recompense of the wicked. For thou hast made Jehovah, who is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Uh huh. So if you believe this, why not stand in this? I bet you if somebody told you for sure you're going to hit lotto and you're going to win a million, you're going to stand on that line. You're going to get that lotto ticket. Huh? If you thought that person was telling you the truth, they said, look, the machine, we got it to where what's going to come out is going to be the number that you get. You're going to get on that line. And, this, and, and it sounds crooked, and it has nothing to do with God. But you'll wholeheartedly go forth and take part in it. A chance. But God's word is not a chance. God's word is sure. Sure. Right. This is better than any lotto you can hit. Because from this comes everlasting life. Not that you're going to live forever. But if you give the right ingredients to your seed, to them that are promised to set the world to right, they would be in it forever. I go to bed worrying about my children. Come on. I can't sleep until my son come in the house. Come on. I be light sleeping. And I be so happy when he come in the house. Because I worry about him. But what kind of worrying would I have if I didn't instruct him about God? Let us go. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy tent. In the midst of Corruption and chaos and destruction. A thousand will fall here and ten thousand will fall here, but it won't come nigh unto you and you won't have no harm. I'm working on this. Come on. Because I want to live. <laughs> and he says that I will renew your spirit like the eagle. In your old age. And I believe every bit of it. And I'm living in some of that now. 
And I love it. This God is magnificent. And I'm telling you, if you live in his path and live in his ways and believe it, you know, there's no harm going to come to you. But the prophecy says that when the people bethink themselves amongst the nations where they're scattered and remember the blessing and, and recall the curse and choose the blessing over the curse and we begin to live and walk in the law of Yah, he said then these things will come to us. So I know it takes a people that is going to make a change to make this thing happen. Okay. To make a full change. And it starts off with the simple thing like, Shalom, my brother. Shalom, my sister. How can I have been mad with you? And what was I mad with you about? I have to question myself to make change so that I can greet you in truth instead of in a lie. Because a shalom and a lie is deceit. That's right. You're better off not saying nothing. That's right. So I need to get myself right that when I talk to people that I feel in my heart that I don't feel so good about, that I can really look into that and find my problem. My problem. Because if we're so up on serving this God wholeheartedly and, and acknowledging that you can't love God without loving His people, and then I have to be up on why I'm feeling ill about my people. And if they're sick, I need to help them rather than hate them. It's important. You understand? The law of God is a healer. Even the doctors wear the rod of Moses on their shirts, on their uniforms, on their doctor shirts. Represent healing. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're supposed to do. Heal the sick. Heal the angry. Heal those that step off. That put themselves in a position to be healed. Don't count how many times you talk to them. You may not have to go out your way to see them, but when you see them, tell them something. Don't hug them. Give them correction. Because hugging without talk is condoning them in their wrong. Yeah. Hey, well, what's up? man, I've seen this. He ain't even asked me to come to the temple. And that's, that's the brother I like. That brother's all right, but he ain't all right. He ain't all right. Because he's supposed to set you on the right course. Cry aloud, spare that. Cause us to know our wrong and our transgressions. Let us go. 11. For he will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. You hear that? So now if you're sitting up in here not believing in this, and then you your own destruction. You your own enemy. But if you acknowledge this to be truth because of studies... And then, understand this. He's commanding his angels to have charge over you. And they got to report back to God to make sure that you are right when the sun go down. Let us go. They shall bear thee upon their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Don't even let my servant stump his toe. Come on. That's how watchful God is over us in our righteousness. Let us go. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and asp, the young lion and the serpent shalt thou trample on the feet. Mm -hmm. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. You understand? You mess around and be in a position or predicament that you're not supposed to be in by fault of man. But because you don't know everything and we slip up and make mistakes. But if you're right with God, you're delivered. You know what it is to walk with the faith of the almighty God and trust of God? Read about Abraham. You understand? Abraham was able to go down into Egypt. Said, so listen, Abraham knew the, the customs of the people and Abraham got insight. And Abraham said, listen, wife, these people would kill me for you. They would kill me for you. He said, say... I pray thee that thou art my sister. Now, by him saying that, he already knew that which follows that, that they're going to call, they're going to summon Sarah. 
already knew that. Teach. But Father spoke to him in the beginning of his journey and told him that I will be with you. He already told him that and Abraham whole-mindedly understood that and believed it. So he knew that you wasn't the first step he'd take in the journey after God telling him that he's going to be with him that he loses his wife. No. That guy didn't touch his wife. And it's not the customs of kings and great men to get a wife to take a woman and just jump right into them. No, man. You had to get groomed for the king. You had to sit in oil for a time, a time, and some days. <laughs> Yeah, you had to marinate and smell like that oil you're sitting in. You had to learn how to approach. It wasn't like today, I like that girl, and all you do is like the girl. You don't know nothing about her. <laughs> nothing about her. Teach. Sweet talk is nice, but it don't add up to nothing. He didn't touch our, our mother Sarah. You think after all of that, that Abraham would lose his wife? And then give her back to him dirty? No. And it's all right? No, 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 no. It didn't happen. Abraham believed and trusted in the almighty God. And he was able to go anywhere in the earth. He was able to fight against five kings. Huh? With his confederate men. And his 318 trained men in his house. There's a pride that comes with being an Israelite too, man. You never put yourself in a position where somebody ungodly can get glory upon you. Work for what you want. Go out and get what you want. And when, when they said that, I'll put you amongst the people that will spoil you, that welfare system killed us. That welfare system here in the United States was like no other system anywhere upon the face of the earth. And look at the characters of the blacks in America. Hmm? They think they we owe it, that that the people owe them something. Let us go. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. That's all I want. I want to be able to call upon my God because I'm in want and need of all things, and I'm surrounded by violent people that don't put God before them. So we need this great king. We need him. We need him on our side. Because what separated father from us was our iniquities. It ain't that he can't hear us. He don't want to hear you. Because time is up now being stupid. Time is up for black people being stupid and dumb. Time is up for black people worshiping a God that looked like the people that brought them over here. When are we going to wake up? Huh? Time is up for going to a place and following a man that just found out a few hours before you found out and you put all your trust in him. That time is up. It said put not your trust in man or in chief men or princes. It says trust ye, O house of Israel, and Yah. If I'm right, I'll get my leadership respect. But all glory, all praise is due to Yehovah. And when you mention Yehovah, you don't mention me. That's right. Teach. Give God the glory that's due to his name. Let us go. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. Uh -huh. With long life will I satisfy him and make him to behold my salvation.